Hello everyone, this is Lee Rose with Banking Transformed Webinars. We'd like to thank you all for joining us today for this webinar from eGain, Virtual Financial Coaching Automation, the new killer application for AI. The recording of the webinar will be emailed to everyone shortly after we've concluded and we will be doing a live Q&A today, so please feel free to utilize that questions panel on the dashboard as well. And now it's my pleasure to introduce our panel. Evan Siegel, VP of Financial Services, AI Solutions at eGain Corporation. Rick Filobreski, Executive VP at Green Path Financial Wellness. And then today we also have Mike Kuiper, Customer Service Manager at eGain Corporation. And of course, Jim Maurice, co-publisher of the financial brand and owner of the Digital Banking Report. So thanks, Lee. Um, today we're going to be discussing something that is becoming more and more important every day. As a result of the uh, pandemic, more consumers than ever, and even small businesses, have been very concerned about their financial well-being. Even those organizations and people that made a deferred loan payment or made an adjustment to their financial standing are concerned about what does the future lie. Now we see this in just the level of, of saving that the United States has had. It's the greatest level of savings ever in the history of our country. That shows people that are concerned, but they don't want to go it alone. They want financial recommendations and advice by an organization that they trust. In some cases, this may be a broker. In some cases, this may be a fintech firm. In many cases, consumers are looking to multiple origins of this advice. So as financial institutions, if you want to differentiate your offering, if you want to personalize your deliverable, if you want to really move market share and retain consumers that are both customers and members, the most important way to do this is to help the consumer with their financial needs, with financial guidance, with intuitive insights that allow a consumer to do better financially. This has got to be embedded in the overall experience. This also has to be personalized to a level that the consumer is going to realize you're not just giving them general knowledge. In addition, they look to you to make it simple and easy so it does not take away from their daily needs. A number of years ago, we looked at PFM, personal financial management, as a solution. Much of that was simply budgeting tools, allowed me to do it better. Consumers don't want that as much as they want guidance as to what do you recommend and how do I move the needle to the next level. So rather than throw the whole aspect of it back to me, consumers are looking for those solutions. Today, the team from eGain are going to prevent, provide, provide you some solutions, some ideas on how to really make a difference. And as I've said in many webinars in the past and podcasts, now is the time to partner with those organizations that are professionals, that can help you get there. They have seen all the things that have held you back from offering this type of solution. They're going to be able to get you there faster and easier than if you go it alone. So I'm going to be turning it over to Rick right now, and he's going to be presenting, as well as Evan and Mike, a lot about what the eGain solution is. I will be interrupting during the presentation at different points to bring out some aspects that I have questions about as we go through this presentation. And as Lee mentioned, if you have a question, put it into the chat box, and we'll get to it. Now, Rick, I'm going to turn it over to you. Great. Thanks, Jim. You teed that up really nicely. Um, you know, we've all seen statistics about the current state of consumer finances. We've all heard these things like nearly half of Americans couldn't cover an unexpected $400 expense and money issues are the top cause for stress and divorce. We know student loan debt continues to climb. But here, here's something else that recently caught my eye. The Financial Health Network recently found that about 60% of all credit union members are struggling financially and 75% of members are dissatisfied with their current financial situation. Um, you know, that's a big number. And I also want to point out the millennial segment. Uh, this, this is a segment that banks and credit unions want to attract. 
It's also a segment that struggles with their finances, honestly. The net worth of the average millennial is about 40% less than Gen X was at the same age. Only 43% are homeowners. Um, and a recent survey in Inc. Magazine found that 89% of millennial non-homeowners say they wanna buy a home, but only 4% think they can afford to buy one within the next year. I mean, wow. Helping these folks pay down debt, improve their credit, buy a home, build wealth, this should be a profitable venture for companies that can figure out how to do it. Your customers and your members, they need financial advice. I mean, that's a fact. If they don't get it from you, they're going to get it somewhere else. From Uncle John or Aunt Betty, from a website they find online, from one of your competitors, or you know, worse yet, from one of the many bad actors out there. And there are, there are a lot out there. It's hard to tell the difference sometimes between a predatory service and one that actually has your best interests at heart. So understandably, people are leery. They don't know who to trust, but they do trust their bank. They trust their credit union. That's an opportunity for you to reward their trust by giving them solid financial advice and advice without a sales pitch. So thanks, Rick. Thanks for teaming that up. Uh, let's look at what happens today when customers go into a bank or credit union. We're going to look at both channels. Let's start with the bank and the phone channel, the human channel. Um, you know, let's start by baselining that financial products are complex. The member-facing channels, uh, typically it's an entry-level position, high turnover, and the incentives do not necessarily reward providing financial guidance. So then when you walk into a branch and ask for advice, what we've seen from a lot of mystery shops, also I've worked at a mega bank for 15 years and personal experience studying the, the channel experience. We see two experiences, and I've shared this with a lot of bank executives, and I typically get head nodding. The two experiences are the, that frontline team member will be an order taker. So tell me what deposit product you want and let's take that application. Or they will be a product pusher. It might be <clears throat> there's a, a, a recommendation engine that will push a product to, the, to that banker. It might be just what that banker feels comfortable selling. They're a, they're a hammer and every customer is a nail. Nonetheless, either of these experiences is not good for the customer and there has to be a better way. When you look at the digital channel, what you generally see is sort of two theme and variations. Uh, some have both, some have one, but uh, the first is tools, lots of sort of self-service individual point solution tools. It might be a budget calculator, it might be a debt utilization calculator, and or a lot of articles. Um, and the, the issue with both of these are it takes motivation, they're hard, they're not generally connected to the goal that the consumer is trying to achieve. And if you think about it, the stats that Rick showed, if you're struggling financially, you don't feel confident to wade into this self-service content. The takeaway box on the bottom of the page kind of reinforces the point. Content that focuses on education alone does not move the needle. It does not get people to actually make change, take an action that will improve their situation. And that's what all this guidance would be about. And, and Evan, you know, to your point, one of the concerns right now is COVID has done one major thing with the consumer. It has made them very aware of the possible, ranging from being able to have Netflix determine what movie you should watch next, or Amazon be able to determine what you should buy, or even Uber Eats being able to make it easier for you to order a meal to be brought in. The consumer now is aware of the power of data and how organizations should make any process, be it either in person or digitally, easier than ever before. So as financial institutions, if we miss and we don't look like we're at the top of our game compared to non-financial institutions, those consumers and small businesses will immediately lose confidence as to the, your ability to really help them as individuals. And I think the important thing to remember is that during all this going on, things have changed so much from the consumer perspective of what they expect and what they know you can do. 
that anything less than that is automatically a bad experience. That's a great point, Jim. I also think that uh, it allows others, as you made the point, to disintermediate the banks. If there are the fintechs out there that can sort of take that frontline point of understanding what the customer's goal is and guiding them through all the, the myriad of solutions there, the bank becomes disintermediated. And that's one of the reasons why we created the virtual financial coach is to put the bank or credit union front and center in the experience of not only telling, helping the customer uh, figure out the action plan they need to take, but like any coach, guiding them through that journey and staying with them. Thanks, Evan. Um, one thing I wanna talk about a little bit is some of the counseling concepts that, that we've tried to bake in to the financial coach. You know, Green Path, where I work, we counsel people on their finances all day, every day, and we've been doing this for 60 years. So we've learned a few things about how to engage people in ways that lead to positive behavior change. You know, first off, the timing has to be right. For people to be interested in financial guidance, typically they're not interested in it until they are. And there's typically some kind of event that motivates them to take action. Similar to teachable moments, these are what I call coachable moments. You know, for example, maybe they're getting collection calls. Um, at Greenpath, we found this to be one of the most important things that drives people to seek help if they're in a financial crisis. Maybe it's something as simple as they're trying to buy a house or a car and they realize their credit score is a problem. Maybe they reach a point where they're just in general stressed out about their finances and decide enough is enough. Today, I'm gonna start getting my finances in order. Or it might be you know, something like a, a getting laid off or getting divorced or having a hospital stay and dealing with unplanned medical bills. It's important to find ways to get in front of people when they're experiencing these types of events to let them know financial advice is available. And in traditional financial counseling and coaching, a huge barrier is that people need to pick up the phone and ask for help. Um, and that's a bridge too far for some people. They're not ever gonna make that call. They're too proud, they're too embarrassed. Uh, maybe they don't wanna give out their personal information. So as we started building the virtual financial coach, we made sure that people could use it and remain totally anonymous. Uh, you know, We intentionally didn't wanna require people to link accounts or provide personal information. Um, accessibility is another barrier with a, with a traditional advice. People need to call during business hours, but Again, the virtual financial coach, obviously that's available to people 24 seven, um, it's easily accessible. Um, you know, we know that it's important to overcome skepticism. People are skeptical in general about debt relief or they're worried about a sales pitch. So we are intentional about trying to quickly establish trust. Um, you know, people generally trust their bank or their credit union, but you can lose that trust quickly if people sense that this is a cookie cutter approach, you're trying to give me generic advice, um, you know, it has to be customized based on their specific situation. It has to be delivered in a way that is empathetic and compassionate. People really need to know you care and you're not just checking a box or going through the motions. And the advice has to be judgment free. Um, Another huge hangup people have when they contact Greenpath is they're worried about getting judged and they're gonna be more likely to open up about finances if they feel genuinely supported. And we've tried to bake all this into the virtual financial coach. We're also building in behavioral science concepts. You know, we know that in our traditional business, uh, when people get overwhelmed, you know, if you give them a lot of things to do or you give them stuff to read, they get overwhelmed and often that means they do nothing. Um, they just sort of shut down. So with the coach, we're trying to give them information in small bits and bites um, in ways that's very easy to understand and, and digest. And we want next steps to feel easy, to feel doable. So we're focusing on completing one action step at a time. Um, and you know that leads right into these this concept of quick wins. It's important to get some quick wins to help people build hope and confidence early. Because if 
the person you can you can lay out a great plan for them you can give them great information but if they don't think it's going to get them where they want to go or they don't think it's possible to improve they're not going to really buy into it um, and that's another point like with our financial counseling business we never try to tell people exactly what to do you should do this and you should do that we want to give them information and we can give them pros and cons and weigh in when we're asked but it's much more effective if we lay out options and empower people to make their own informed decisions um, buy-in is stronger follow through is stronger if we let them decide on a course of action you know with our help and, and the uh, guardrails that we give them so again, we've tried to, to, to design the coach in a way that lets people sort of choose their own adventure. You know, they decide what areas they're interested in and we're not just force feeding information to them. Okay. So with that buildup of sort of the background, what's the industry state and uh, what's uh, the, the, the green path experience that went into the coach, Let's tell you a little bit more about the coach, actually, with some of the the, uh, the, guide, the inhibitors that people have. So, Rick, this is still you. Sorry, I jumped in there early. No problem. This really just sort of reinforces some of the things I just talked about. Um, you know, people get turned off by generic advice. They don't want a sales pitch. They don't have time to deal with it during normal business hours. They're embarrassed to talk about their finances. You know, they're overwhelmed or maybe they're bored by the whole financial subject. Um, you know, we deal with this every day and, and we've tried to make the virtual financial coach, you know, something that overcomes these hurdles. It's personalized. It's agenda free. Um, people can stay anonymous. They can access it 24 seven. Advice is easy to understand. It's and it's delivered in a conversational gamified way. You know, it's interesting it, it, as you're discussing this change in behavior is not something people want to do even when they know there's a problem and i i bring in the medical field a lot of times saying you know the doctor will tell you forever to change your diet change your exercise regimen but until something dramatic happens you know one of those life events that you mentioned people don't move forward but if they move forward they want to move forward tentatively as you said building trust along the way what's important for financial institutions to understand is this process is an engagement process it's something that keeps the engagement going and allows the consumer to continually provide information at their pace to get better and better and more and more personalized answers. What that does, it keeps the engagement alive. And for any institution right now, the key in any digital solution is somehow to keep engagement. This is why PayPal is expanding their product realm. This is why other organizations are doing more and more because they realize the more you go on the phone or the more you go on the computer to look at a solution, the more integrated to that financial institution you're going to be the more committed the more trustworthy you're going to be and the key is it helps the consumer realize you're in it for them as opposed to you amen jim well said and jim i would build on that and add that one of the experiences i had uh, prior to joining egate and building the virtual financial coach at the mega bank i actually stood up a team of Anchor financial coaches. And one of the things we saw was that um, you were talking about sort of that engagement and building confidence and behavior change. Even when people would make one small positive step, such as pulling their credit report and finding an error and disputing it, the financial coach team that, that we had would check in with folks. And what would happen is getting one small win, they would feel like, oh my gosh, I'm empowered. And they would go off and do a lot on their own beyond what our coaches would provide. So the sort of that angle too, where you can start to build confidence in the in the folks and get the behavior change because they start to get the wins. And again, as Rick described, that's sort of front and center and how we built the virtual coach. So let me tell you a little bit about more about the virtual coach. There's a screenshot of it on the left-hand side of the page here. It is an app-like experience, but it does not require you to download an app. Um, as we talked about, there's a lot of behavioral science in this and downloading something as simple as downloading an app is a friction point. And so it's, we don't, didn't want to have that step and have that friction. It launches from uh, just like a, a chatbot would from any digital property from within your app, as well as uh, any institution that implements this can also put a URL on a customer communication. Let's say 
credit decline letter, and then with that URL, the consumer can launch the coach. eGain has 20 years, 20 plus years of AI and machine learning experience. We're one of the pioneers in the space. <clears throat> and so the way it manifests itself, and you'll see this, we're gonna give you a demo here momentarily, is it's a personalized experience that the consumer gets. Uh, as we've alluded to, we've built this in partnership with GreenPath. And so it's GreenPath's advice and the experience that the consumer really gets, <clears throat> it's like they're chatting with one of GreenPath's top counselors. However, it's all automated with eGain's AI. There's two parts to the experience. Part one is that conversation, that chat conversation where we figure out, well, what's the customer attempting to do? And you know what's the path that they want to have, and then they get an action plan, one that's a bite-sized action plan, that one to three-step action plan. Part two is to get at that sort of behavioral change that Jim was alluding to, is we have behavioral nudges that the consumer gets via their message channel of choice, SMS, Facebook, what have you. It's check-ins with the consumer. So let's say the first step of the action plan was to pull your credit report. A couple of days after they first interacted with the coach, they'll get that, that message. Hey, Evan, did you get a chance to pull your credit report? If I say no, I'll then get a link to my credit report. Say no problem. That, you know, no time like the president to actually pull your report and link. And again, that gets to that reducing friction. Make it easy for them to take that first step. If they said they did pull their, their credit, we give them congratulations to sort of build that momentum and then remind them of the second step in their action plan. With this collective sort of AI-powered coaching experience, what we've created is an engaging, highly scalable solution that overcomes one of the biggest inhibitors that banks and credit unions face to delivering personalized uh, advice at scale, and that is it's low cost and it's always compliant. Uh, bots don't go off script, unlike bankers, and uh, we've worked closely with GreenPath's team of compliance experts to make sure that all the advice uh, is highly compliant. So, Evan, am I understanding this correctly, that what happens is if the consumer, once they get engaged, falls off path, stops engaging, starts, starts to abandon the process, that you actually re-engage, something that we, we kid about the fact that digital account openings, the biggest problem the financial institutions have, they number one, don't know who's tried to engage. And number two, we never get back to the consumer quick enough to not lose them. So you tell me that this, this solution actually helps re-engage the consumer so they don't fall off the path. So you actually exactly. work on their behalf exactly. going, you may not like this right now, but try this, go this direction. Exactly. Well, we're, we're, it's, it's Coach Leah. You interact with Coach Leah, and then Coach Leah knows what your action plan is, and she checks in with you to make sure you're following along the steps, and as you make progress, those nudges will know what the next step you're, you're working on, and if you fall off the path, she'll help you get back on the path. Exactly. And there's a human element, too, which we get really excited about. We're, we're, this is um, sort of high-tech and high touch for those that need it. And that's why we're so excited about our partnership with GreenPath, one of the leading financial wellness counseling agencies and nonprofits out there. Um, you know, basically what we're seeing in the early implementation here is actually it's about 99% of the, of the consumers engaged with the coach. They get what they need from the coach. However, some folks, they're in a tougher situation. The AI detects stress based on the paths that folks go down excuse me, as well as the answers they give. And we offer as an, a, an option, a phone number where they can call a Green Path counselor, depending on the you know, stress or what path they go down. And then they get as part of the solution, a no charge uh, to the consumer counseling session with a Green Path uh, certified counselor. And so it's really, you know, some folks do need that extra handholding that a counselor can provide. And so this high tech, high touch solution does provide that. And by the way, the way this, the solution is structured, it's always free to the consumer and it's the sponsoring bank or credit union that is paying for it. Again, under that principle of, we wanna reduce friction. We're really here trying to make scalable mass financial advice available to all. 
for those of you <clears throat> that are getting excited about the, the potential of the virtual financial coach, we have one more piece that hopefully will fuel that excitement. This is a turnkey solution. Uh, in my experience, um, a lot of times the business executives get very excited about a potential solution, but then that excitement is mitigated by the IT team who's got a roadmap that's booked up for 12 to 18 months. Here, <clears throat> literally, if any of you out there were to say, hey, we love this solution, we can stand it up for your financial institution in two hours. There's no system integration. The coach gets all the information it needs from the conversation. Um, it's turnkey, it comes with GreenPath's proven best advice. Basically, all that we need is a logo, because it's a personalized branded experience. We need the logo from your financial institution. And there needs to be a snippet of code inserted wherever you want the coach to be offered, just like what would happen with a chatbot. So it can be offered within uh, any digital property, your app, or any communication. So, so, so to that point, Evan, I hate to interrupt again, but to that point, it sounds like and the, the size of the institution is not an inhibitor. In other words, while the solution acts very much like one of the, the, the large robo-advisor advisory firms out there, the reality is being a smaller organization or maybe not having perfect data is not an inhibitor to getting engaged with uh, with eGame. That's exactly right, Jim. And for those large organizations that let's say they, they do want to um, they have their own personalized advice or they do want to do integration, you know, that's an option too, although you lose that turnkey feature. What we're finding is most folks want to get going right away. They love the turnkey nature of it. They love, as you made the point earlier, Jim, to have a solution to digitally engage with their consumers right away. So, so obviously right now with people coming out of both PPP loans and also the government uh, solution packages, there's going to be a large number of consumers that are all, all of a sudden are going to have to face the face the music. And we're going to have to define as organizations, geez, did that person forego mortgage payments because they couldn't pay it or because they wanted that money to be transferred into a savings account, something we don't know right now. But this solution actually can help us get engaged that way. And in your turnkey solution, at a time when people are very quickly in the next month or so, are going to have to solve some major problems and they're going to be in, a, in the market for these kinds of solutions. You bet. That's exactly right. Uh, we, we do think the timing is perfect for a solution like this. Um, do you want to let folks know that, you know, although this is coming at a good time for the consumers, uh, we spend a lot of time building up to what creating what we'll show you in a little bit. There's a lot of sort of research that went into it. We spoke to uh, a lot of coaches from different realms, did research, you know, personal trainers, there are the coaches in the diet and exercise realm, and we took out a few key learnings. I'll just share a couple. One is that, um, you know, you need to gel with the personality of your coach for you to be successful to get that behavior change. And so <clears throat> what we're gonna show you today is what we call the traditional coach, sort of is a combination of all the others. But uh, uh, coach also does come in other personas. So we have tough love and cheerleader as two examples that are on different ends of the spectrum. Tough love sets very high expectations, holds you highly accountable. And then cheerleader is the other end of the spectrum, which leads with positivity. And so the user experience is you pick which persona you like. You can switch if you, if, if you experience it and, and, and uh, don't like your choice. But the philosophy here is that if you like your coach and it fits your style, you're more likely to stay engaged with it. The other one which we talked about is just those bite-sized action plans. We really don't want folks to get overwhelmed. So we give them no more than three action steps. Once they complete those three action steps, they can go back to the coach and get the next. So hopefully we got you excited. To, to about this concept of a virtual financial coach. And to kind of drive it home, we're gonna have Mike Kuiper from eGain give you a demo. Uh, and so you can actually see it in action. So Mike, over to you. Thanks, Evan. I'm going to share my screen here. Just waiting for the permission to come through to share.
There it is, okay. All right, so uh, Evan or Rick or Jim, when you confirm that you're seeing the phone? Yep. yep. All right, excellent. You can see it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead here and launch the coach. You'll see Coach Lee here and her initial message here, kind of introducing herself to Taylor. Uh, Taylor will be our uh, demo profile. Uh, normally think of her in her early to mid 20s. Her life event that caused it is that she wanted, wanted to get a mortgage and uh, doesn't isn't sure if her more credits are. In fact, she has a hunch that it's not there. She did a little research online, um, but was overwhelmed a little bit with all the information. And so she saw the coach out there. And so she decided, you know what, let me give this a try and kind of learn a little bit more about my credit and what I can do to improve it. You'll notice in the messaging, there's some of that empathy and that emotional intelligence from Green Path, um, where we really try to model their best coaches. And then here you're seeing the three factors that we're focusing on, which is paying bills on time, making sure you have an accurate credit report, and then understanding the credit that you already have, how to use it effectively and not overuse it. And really, if those three areas are in line, uh, most uh, Americans should have good credit. And so we're trying to knock off those three biggest factors. We also have a ton of active choice in, in throughout. There's hundreds and hundreds of customized paths that the uh, users can go down based on their knowledge level and what their areas of weakness are. The first question we're asking here is, uh, do you want to learn about um, different factors or do you want to move right to action? And we do have some great data on that. About 30 to 40% of the people that engage with the coach do want to do some learning. So we're filling in those knowledge gaps. The other, other 50 to 60% or 60 to 70% go right to action. So we're, we're able to customize it based on their needs and wants. For Taylor, we're going to focus on her credit utilization, how she uses her current credit. So she sees this option now and says, you know what? I, I know about paying my bills on time. I've recently seen my credit report, but I do have some credit cards and I use those. So let me see what happens with those. So now, in the matter of just a few bullets, we're able, our bubbles, we're able to now teach Taylor all about what credit utilization is, that the magic percentage to aim for is 30% or below, which is going to be a new concept for her. And so we're able to really, in just a small amount of time here, just really get this information out. And uh, some of our focus groups early on really praised this approach of small bite sized advice. In fact, we had one uh, user that said, I learned a lot about my credit that I didn't know. I read this if I would have seen this in an article. I've seen articles like this before, I skip over them, but having it like this textile really made a big difference. We also have knowledge checks throughout. Um, this allows Coach Leah to, to reinforce the key learning, which is in this case, what is the ideal percentage of credit utilization to stay at or below? And it also allows the users to get a win on the board. So we'll say Taylor's gonna get that one right. And we're gonna say, nice work, Taylor. And then now more of that active choice, this is now a chance to learn about paying bills on time. And as we've already said, Taylor's gonna say, nope, I feel, I feel comfortable with that. And then one in five Americans have errors in their credit report, uh, which by the way, that's going up during COVID. Um, she's gonna say, nope, I've seen my credit report recently. Let me move right to the action plan. So now we introduce the three areas. Does she want to learn about bill payment strategies, credit utilization strategies, or credit report review and dispute strategies? And she can learn about all three, or two out of three, whatever she wants to, to, to take action on. Um, for this case, we're just gonna say, Taylor wants to look at credit utilization, stay in the same path that she's been on. And even more, you're seeing here, more customization. Um, she, then you'll notice the, the confirm button here. I'm gonna select, calculate credit utilization, but I could also select some of the other ones as well. So if Taylor wants to learn how to understand her credit card better, if she wants tips on how to lower her utilization, and or if she wants to calculate. And she's gonna calculate, because she's feeling like she's above that 30%, and she kinda wants to get an eyeball on that to determine what action she needs to take. So we're gonna have her get her credit card statements out. She's gonna have a total limit of 12,000. And I like to put her above 50%, so we'll go in the 6,000 range. And so now she knows she's at 56%. Um, we reintroduced the 30% with a goal of 3,600 to get to 30% on her specific situation. And then we also put it into dollars and cents. So her goal would be to, over time, lower her balance by 3,185. Um, also with the idea that, hey, any movement is positive. You know, any low down movement is positive. Um, and then now this is another point you'll notice in here where we have that stress test. So as Evan said, we're seeing most people do feel comfortable and confident in their plan, but for those that don't, this is when 
I'll say, no, I can't reduce my balance. We introduce Green Path and with a specific number. So now uh, for Taylor, she has raised her hand and said, I need additional help. Um, I need additional help in this area. And so she's getting the help that she needs. And then for Green Path, they're getting someone who's really self-selected their path already. It's already determined, here's where I'm at. Here's where I need my help. So great partnership there we're seeing with this. And the customers that have worked with Green Path have been extremely happy with the results. More of the active choice. She can now go into bill payment strategies. She's going to say, nope, I'm good. And same thing with credit, credit reports. No thanks. So now what you're seeing here is the summary section. So we're going to summarize her plan. She's got just the one area you're seeing there credit utilization, which we discussed. And then we're going to send her the plan. First, we'll find out if it's realistic, and we're going to say yes, realistic, or achievable, yes. And then now it's going to ask me to, for my phone number here to send the plan. So I will be putting that in in just a second. And then I'm going to show you the plan as well. Give me just one minute. I like, to take, I like to take my time here because I don't want to send this to someone else. All right, there we go. So now we'll close here with a pat on the back to, to Taylor with a real you know, positive message there to keep going and get, get started on that process. And then I'm just going to wait for the last message and let them know that that was helpful. And now I will jump to my messages. These, what you're seeing here, these are ones from earlier today. Um, I'm going to show you one that I did that was very similar, the same same path that we just had. So for Taylor, this is what she'd get via text message here, this plan. And as I open it up, you'll see it's basically everything we just talked about, all summarized for her in a nice action, action plan here for her to walk away with. I also did some earlier. I did one a little bit, a little bit ago in which I did all the paths or multiple paths. Uh, oh, that's, right. that's the new one that came in already. Let's go with this one. There we go. So I like to share this just because I like to demo the credit utilization, but you know, if, if someone's trying to find errors in the credit report, we go over in the coaching, which you didn't see, how to find errors, where to look, what to look for. We also have the link there to annualcreditreport.com. So, you know, all, all that easy use, no Googling, just go right there. And then similarly, I like to show if you're doing dispute errors, we've had multiple, multiple users dispute errors successfully. And so we tell them what to have ready to dispute and then direct links to each of the credit mirror reporting agencies to make those disputes. So take a lot of the, um, the taking notes and that type of stuff out of it and just deliver it all directly to the, uh, the user when they're done with their plan. And that is it for me. I'm going to hand it back to Evan. Okay, great. Thanks, Mike. Let me just confirm you guys are seeing my screen again. Yep. Okay, great. So we're live with 29, 25, excuse me, financial firms on our way to 30 here in the very near future. And as you can see, it's sort of a smattering from a, every region in the country. And what we're seeing as consumers start to use Coach Leah is a couple of things. So first of all, the, the institutions that are implementing it are really using it to brand build. Uh, you have an example on the left-hand side of the page uh, the financial coach landing page that uh, one credit union has done. We've seen people use social media to promote the coach. Uh, we've seen uh, bankers put it on uh, on their communications. There's a lot of sort of make it out there, make it aware, because uh, the, the bankers and uh, team members know that their customers need help. And so there's a lot of brand building around it. And then we're seeing some really, really encouraging results. So as you saw on the journey, we asked people to rate the experience. 88% are rating the coaching experience as positive. We asked folks if their plan is achievable. It's built with lots of active choice. So this isn't terribly surprising that 77% of the folks think that their bite size plan is achievable. This last stat is the one that I'm personally blown away with. Um, we we're able we, we have full analytics journey analytics we know where everyone goes in the coaching journey so we know when folks are pulling their credit and using coach leah to review their credit report 69 percent of folks that use leah to review their credit report are finding an error and then as mike showed you the coach helps them dispute that 
The reason why I love this stat is um, it's really delivering value from that first interaction. Um, it's you know our belief that one of the fastest ways you can get a bump to your credit report is to uh, get some error that might be lowering your score artificially quickly removed. So just right, right out of the gate, some real value for those that use the coach to review their report and find an error. So what we'd like to do, <laughs> excuse me, is you know this this is a, a product we're excited about. We here at eGain at a Green Path. Uh, we'd love to have you give it a try. And so uh, we have a, a no commitment trial. Uh, since it's turnkey, we can get it up and running quickly. You use it, uh, give it a try. Uh, no no commitment to use it for longer term. But we're pretty confident that once you and your customers experience Coach Leah. Uh, that it will be a winner and something that will really build your brand and help improve your customer experience. So with that, why don't I just take a couple of minutes to tell you about both. So Evan, I have, I have one more question. Go ahead, the Jim. Consumer, the consumers you have that are engaged in the process, have you found that they keep on using it is, as a, so it's more of a process, a behavioral process than a product. I mean, we we gave, Mike gave a really quick demonstration. It, it had a beginning and an end point. But do you find the consumers that have engaged continue to stay engaged because actually financial wellness does not have an end point. You can keep on getting better. I'm wondering, do you find that the people that engage just keep on engaging with the product? We are finding at this point that they they complete their action plan and then um they they feel good i think as you know we're, we have a very aggressive uh roadmap to add tons of functionality we're basically adding new functionality every six weeks as we add more journey paths and more functionality we are very confident that the folks will keep coming back more and more Right now, um, they're, they're, they're getting success with the completing the journey they're on, and then they move on and feel empowered with our beliefs. Because you gave the example of the, the diet or health plans, and, and you're right, they're, they're really made some really good headway into making engagement processes and changing behavior. But what's interesting about a diet, just like a financial wellness plan, we tend to sometimes get back to our old habits when we solve the one that we had on our top of mind. And so I would imagine this is something that the consumer keeps on coming back. It's not a, a one and done type situation. It would probably be a situation that, yes, I achieved what I initially want to achieve. Geez, can you help me with this? So, yep. Yep. Exactly. Great. So, eGain, you know, we, the coach is built on our, as I alluded to earlier, our 20 years of experience, 20 years. And so, uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with, familiar with us, we're a global SaaS company who has an industry-leading digital engagement platform, and the key word there is platform. Um, it's a one-stop solution for digital customer engagement. So what does that mean? If you look at it, we provide three primary uh, capability hubs. We have a messaging hub, a knowledge hub, and an analytics hub, all informed by AI and machine learning. And so you can see around the outside of this semicircle, as a platform, all the capabilities that we enable. And so our, our clients, some turn on multiple, some turn on only one. And the key differentiator for us is we use, uh, with our Knowledge Hub, we have a single source of truth that is rippled through all of these digital customer engagement channels. And so if you're using, if your bankers are using our Knowledge Desktop, and your bank is using our uh, chatbot, they're all powered by the same knowledge repository. And so the information that's provided across the institution, whether it be digital or via the, the, the team members, is consistent. And another unique feature is that uh, we have lots of APIs that allow us to plug in to any of the systems sort of laid out there in the blue band. Um, so, for instance, Salesforce, you know, out of the box capabilities as one example of a, a system that we plug into immediately. For, uh, uh, in our 20 plus years, we've built uh, rep relationships with leading brands, uh, financial services, our largest segment, and you can see a few of the, of the banks and credit unions that we have relationships there. Finally, you know, we're really proud of this. But the experts like Gartner and Forrester, who spend a lot of time kicking the tires on solutions, have 
rated us highly, in fact, number one in respective spaces. And this is something we're really proud about. And if you want to learn more, we'd be happy to, to share the actual reports that, uh, that talk about this. So now, Rick, over to you to talk a little bit about GreenPath. Yeah, thanks, Evan. Real quick, GreenPath is a 501c3 nonprofit. We've been around since 1961. And we are one of the, the country's largest providers of financial counseling and debt management. Um, okay, so what does that mean? So we typically do a deep dive into to a person's financial situation. These initial conversations usually last about an hour. They're focused on understanding the person's goals and their current situation, uh, combing through household income, debts, living expenses, to, to help them explore options so they can make an informed decision on, on moving forward. Everybody leaves in what I call our core session with a, a custom budget and an action plan. And about one in every five people we counsel goes on a debt management program. Um, and this is a plan where they pay their creditors through us. This isn't debt settlement, it's not debt consolidation, it's not the stuff you see on TV. With this option, they're paying the entire principal amount, but at significantly lower interest rates. Um, so late fees are waived, over limit fees are waived, accounts are re-aged, and we do all of this at scale. We are counseling over 200,000 households every year. Um, last year, we repaid about $242 million, um, in debt on behalf of about 45,000 people on these debt management programs. And we have formal partnerships with more than 600 banks and credit unions across the country. Um, real quickly, I, I just like to say that, you know, when people reach out to us, they're in this transactional frame of mind. Their finances are impacting their daily lives. They're getting collection calls. They're just trying to make ends meet. They're stressed. And we're really trying to transform them into, you know, with human connection and compassion. Um, helping them put together an action plan, showing them what's possible, providing some clear next steps to lower the stress and get them on track to, get, to getting where they wanna go financially. And if you'd like to learn more about this virtual financial coach, um, please shoot an email to either me or Evan. If you wanna play around with the coach on your own, the current version of it, which is somewhat limited, it's just focused on uh, credit improvement right now, but you can visit the Green Path website or the eGain website, and we each have a virtual financial coach page uh, where you can play around with it. And Lee, I think we're going to send this back to you. Wonderful, thank you so much, everyone. Um, I'll tell you what, Lee. Before you before you get into the the uh, questions from the audience, I, will, I have one question for the team, and that is, when you're selling this to, or trying to sell this to financial institutions. What is the biggest roadblock to getting them to actually implement your solution? Because it seems, you know, as you said, it's turnkey. There's no cost initially to the financial institution. It's something that you help market. All these different elements, all the check boxes seem to be checked. What is the hesitancy that you see, the, the greatest hesitancy? So I'll take a first crack at that, Rick. I'm curious to get your take. Um, it's just bandwidth uh you know uh, even though it's turnkey some folks are like we just have a, a, a full plate but i will tell you i've been uh a long career selling consulting services and, and other products this is the thing where i've made sales uh, basically on the spot because folks they want to help their customers a lot of banks and credit unions they have in their vision and values that you know they exist to help customers improve their financial wellness or something along those lines and yet they know that they're a long a long way from their vision and values and so it's been a great thing in that we actually close deals at the first at the first meeting so uh, great Rick, what would you add not much to add. I think competing priorities is the biggest hurdle. You know, even though it is turnkey, it does require some time and attention. And then once it's implemented, you know, we're still learning about how to maximize engagement. Um, so there's definitely some investment of time that's required. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Lee, back to you. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, you're fine. Uh, the first question is for you, Evan and Rick. What do you think are the most common hurdles that keep financial institutions from more broadly delivering financial advice to their customers? I'll, I'll, I'll kick off the answer. Um, so I think about, you know, 
a lot of folks talk about financial wellness, but they don't have broad financial wellness programs. And I personally experienced this in my time at a, at a mega bank. I think there's a couple of key causes. Uh, one is no one really owns financial wellness. You know, very, very few banks or credit unions have a role that owns that. So really it rolls up to the very top of the organization. Um, another is it's hard and there's not a clear measure. So let's say you do put a lot of resources at it. Um, it's really unclear whether you're making progress at it. Another one, which actually is part of the reason why we created the virtual coach is it's expensive and it's risky from a compliance standpoint. Um, you know, when we had these at the mega bank, when we had banker coaches helping folks, we were spending anywhere from 60 to $200 per customer and at scale in a mass market that doesn't necessarily pencil. And then we have the compliance folks being super worried. Uh, the banker might go off script and, and do something and get the bank in trouble. So those are some of the most common uh, inhibitors I see to advice and financial wellness at scale. Rick, what would you add? I agree with everything you said, and I'll just add that it is tough. It's difficult. You know, it's difficult to engage people with advice like this, and it's even more difficult to get them to change behavior. Um, so I think, you know, there have been plenty of, of honest to goodness tries and investments made, but um, institutions find that it's just very difficult to sustain that expense and that investment, you know, over time. Great, thank you. Uh, the next question here looks like it directed to our e-game team. Um, can you discuss the incremental sales lifts generated from virtual financial product selection session yes yeah, so right now the, the the coach does not make uh product specific recommendations but as i mentioned we have a very robust roadmap and so uh it's one of the items that's top on the roadmap um and that works really the, the way it will be implemented is let's just take a, one of the great use cases which is the credit decline experience we believe the virtual coach can take what that the credit card experience, which is possibly one of the worst experiences in banking. You know, um, my 18 year old daughter is trying to get a credit card right now, so I'm personally familiar with the decline experience. You, know, you get a letter, a form letter that basically says, "Sorry, we don't want your business." And if you want to learn more, you know, here's a couple credit bureaus you might go reach out to. Not a great experience. What we can do is you can take the take the coach. The coach will engage with that person, and then uh, we will be able to send back again. The capability is not there yet, but uh, but before the year end, we will be able to. Once we know the customer has made progress against their plan, we will send them back to the financial institution that referred them. Right now, what we're seeing is that the coach is a great way to build your brand and have a great customer experience. Later this year, we'll, we'll sort of bolster that with uh, uh, the, the the ability to sort of make the right product recommendation. I do want to add one point that's really important here. We really want this to be about giving quality advice to consumers. And so a principle that we have is we will make product recommendations, but only when it makes sense for the advice that's being given. So in other words, you come to the coach because you've been declined for credit. It makes sense to say, go back and reapply for that credit product because that's why you came here. We will not, however, uh, make sort of really nilly recommendations that aren't consistent with the advice that a coach Lee is delivering. Thanks, Evan. Uh, Rick, the next uh, question is for Greenpath. How do you handle customers that are referred to your team by the coach? So I described a, a little bit about that towards the end there. Um, people, you know, if they're going to go through a discussion with, with a coach or a counselor, they're going to need like 30 to 60 minutes. So the first thing we'll do is find out why they're calling, learn more about their goals, understand where they want to go, and then we'll figure out how much time they have. If they don't have that much time, we'll schedule some time to actually do an appointment. If they do have time, then we'll we'll move straight ahead. And one of the first things we do is with their permission, we do a soft credit pull. When with a push of a button, um, we get all their, their debt information um, on the screen and then we can focus most of that conversation and instead of it 
being on like how many debts do you have it's more on understanding how they're spending it you know what their living expenses are what their household income is understanding exploring their options and again that whole process for that initial session they should plan on about 60 minutes great thanks rick um, the next question for time purposes will have to be our last, unfortunately. Um, Evan, do you do the sponsoring banks get data on usage patterns and consumer results from the coach? Yeah, absolutely. Um, as I mentioned, that's one of the benefits of a virtual coach versus a human coach is we have a, an abundance and an embarrassment of data, rich data. We know uh, every path that a consumer goes down, if they abandon, where they abandon, uh, and we also that what that allows is uh, AV testing. So we will be constantly, we are, and we will be constantly tweaking uh, the flows and the advice to to try to improve those journey metrics so that we get the optimum advice by the segment we're dealing with. And so yeah, the, the banks and credit unions get that reporting. And then the, the e-gain team is looking at it and using it to continually improve the effectiveness of Coach Leah. Great, thank you. Did anyone have any final closing remarks before we go ahead and wrap up? I just wanna, I, I'm hoping if you took the time to join this conversation, you're, you're passionate about financial wellness and helping your customers improve their financial wellness. You know, if you have any thoughts, uh, both Rick and I share that passion and see our emails here even you know, continue the conversation, shoot us a note. We love to talk about this subject. We'd love to hear about your uh, experiences working on behalf of your customers and members, and uh, we'd love to continue the conversation. Thanks for joining today. Thank you so much, everyone. And of course, many thanks to the entire eGain team for bringing us, us this webinar. Uh, we will be sending you an email today with an on demand link if you'd like to rewatch it. Thanks, everyone, that joined us. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. -bye.